Only on CBS this morning, we are pleased to announce the 2015 National Teacher of the Year. It is America's oldest and most prestigious honor of its kind. Candidates inspire their students. They play an active role in the community. The teachers earn respect in and out of the classrooms. Hundreds of thousands were nominated. This year's winner is Shanna Peoples. She teaches English at Palo Duro High School in Amarillo, Texas. We asked some of her former students why she deserves this morning's honor. She sees past any front that a student may put on, helps them discover their dreams and their goals, and then pushes them to help them achieve them. Miss People's faith in me uh, to achieve great things and to do great things and be great um, has never faltered, and even now she's still advocating for me, even though I'm a junior uh, at Harvard, and, you know, um, well out of her class. Shanna, welcome. Thank you. What does it take to make a great teacher? I think what it takes to make a great teacher is somebody who just loves what they do and who loves kids and who loves to bring out the potential in every kid. But, but you it's, tried it's, to it's run away from it. the classroom, it. Yeah. 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 But you tried to run away from it. You were a pet sitter. You yeah. were a medical assistant. Yeah. Not that there's wrong with pet sitting, but you were a yeah. pet sitter, a medical assistant. You were a reporter. You did everything you said, everything you could to resist teaching. That's true. Why? I, and what because, finally got you in? I think I was afraid of it because I knew I was going to like love it in a way that was going to be pretty consuming, and it, and it was. Mm -hmm. I, as a reporter, I covered schools, and the more I was in those classrooms, the more I wanted to stay in those classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I just need to go ahead and get over myself and do this. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the number one thing missing in schools or in classrooms? I think that we. it's easy to forget that each person in front of you, you know, they're coming with all of these different experiences and really kind of different home lives and it's really important to make a relationship with like every kid that you have and that's really, that's the first and best lesson I think that you can do as a teacher. And each one is different. Yes. You, you say that your students shape the kind of teacher that you are. What do you mean by that, Shannon? They, so many of my students come from traumatic backgrounds. I teach in a Title I school, which means that it's a high poverty school, and a lot of my students are refugees mm -hmm. from countries all over the world. And so knowing what they've come from makes me understand that I don't like make promises easily or, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm very aware of what they're coming from. So I try to honor my word. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the things that you're known for is teaching the Dr. Seuss books. Tell us about that. Well, there's a great Dr. Seuss story called The Sneetches. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's always a good story because it deals with, like, any kind of issues of trying to make somebody other. Yeah. You know, how we separate people by anything, mm -hmm. like race, class, mm -hmm. gender, anything. And that story is one that anybody from kindergarten up through adult learners, they can really relate to. And it really gives that message in an, in an interesting way, and like all of Dr. Seuss, it really stays with, with you and makes you think. What do you think of the Common Core Initiative? I think, well, in Texas, you know, we're not a Common Core right. state, but what I know of it is it's a set of standards that I think are really good at kind of what we want for all of our kids, which is critical thinking, high level reading and writing, and those skills that we know, regardless of technology, kids are going to need to be able to do that. They're going to need to be able to read and write at a high level. So on Wednesday, you're going to the White House. Yeah. President Obama yeah. will introduce you. Yes. So you're going to pull him aside and you're going to say what? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, yeah. I have some things on my mind. Well, I, I first of all, I'm very, I'm grateful to him for yes. even having the program yeah. there. That's amazing because teachers don't get thanked enough, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask you about that. Do they not get thanked enough and do we not appreciate our teachers sufficiently? Well, I think, I mean, it's an easy job to sort of take for granted, I think, because so many teachers are in their classroom every day with their head down, you know, yes. taking care of business, and so it, it's easy to kind of see them in the background, but if you think, everybody has a teacher story. Yes. A Andy Rooney said that. He said, you know, <clears throat> most people only have like There's five a... or six people, but teachers have yeah. thousands mm -hmm. that remember them. You say it's yeah. the toughest job you'll ever love, right. and you love it because... One sentence. <laughs> you 
can help write the end of the story for every kid. Mm -hmm. And that's the most exciting and the most privileging thing about doing this job. It was nice to see your yeah. students talking about you yeah. as you were introduced. Congratulations, Congratulations. to you. Congratulations. Well, Teacher you. of the Year. Thank you. Yes. Heading to the White so House. So wonderful. Thank that's you for great. all you do. Well, thank you. Thank you.